Hi, and welcome back to Dr. Archer's lecture. We've been talking about costs, all kinds of costs this week. Total costs, fixed costs, variable costs. When we ended our time together last time, we were talking about averages. Average total costs, which you see in the curve right here, the traditional U-shaped curve of the average total cost. And then we have average variable costs, not so deep a U, but it follows kind of the same pattern. And then we have average fixed costs, which starts high and then trails off and gets smaller and smaller and smaller forever. All three of these costs are calculated by dividing by quantity. Total cost divided by quantity. Variable cost divided by quantity. Fixed cost divided by quantity. And if this is confusing you, it might be a good idea to go back and have another look at that last lecture to make sure you understand before we go forward. The other cost that we talked about is the marginal cost. That's seen as this orange J-shaped curve right here. And marginal cost is change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. And it tells us the cost of producing one more. That marginal cost curve is going to become important in what we're going to talk about today. But before we go forward, we need to think about the other side of this equation. The real goal of any business is to generate a profit. Where does profit come from? Profit is defined as total revenue minus total cost. We've spent a ton of time talking about costs. What about that revenue side? Let's think about that for a moment. How a business generates revenue depends on its competition, and it depends on the market structure in which it operates. There are four market structures, and they're discussed at some length in your textbook. And I would encourage you to read through that Make sure that you understand those four structures because they are a part of the Apley assignments for this week. But mostly for this class, we discuss just one market structure, and that's perfect competition. What are the characteristics of perfect competition, you may ask? Good question. Perfect competition is characterized by you have many buyers and many sellers. I'm not talking about a few hundred or a few thousand. I'm talking about as many people as grow wheat all over the world, or as many people as buy wheat in any capacity all over the world. We're talking about millions. The goods that these people have for sale, the sellers have for sale, are identical. In other words, Wheat is wheat is wheat. You can't distinguish wheat grown here from wheat grown in China from wheat grown anywhere. It's all the same. It's just wheat. And it's all thrown together on the wheat market. There's no distinguishing. And finally, firms can enter and exit this market pretty easily. Yes, it takes a little money to get into farming, certainly but there are no barriers to entry. You don't have to have government permission. You don't have to have a, a license. You don't have to have anything like that. If you have the money to buy the land and equipment, boom, you're in. But it's these first two characteristics, many buyers and many sellers. So many buyers and so many sellers, in fact, that the actions of any one it's like a drop in the ocean. It has no effect on the market as a whole. And the fact that the goods are offered for sale at, are, are all identical means that the buyers and sellers are price takers. They have no market power at all, no control over price. Well, if the buyers don't set the price, and if the sellers don't set the price, well, who does? Let's take a look at that. On the left, what you see is the wheat market, the total market, the worldwide market for wheat. And this looks like a pretty normal market, doesn't it? You have your demand curve here in the orange. 
your supply curve here in the blue. And at this point where the two intersect, at that point where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied, you, you find the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. This is the market price and the market quantity for the market as a whole. But the market is so big and the goods are so identical that that market price and quantity becomes the only price and quantity. And so this equilibrium price becomes the market price. And for the individual farmer, for me as a wheat grower, I don't have any choices. This price is the price. That's all there is. I can't sell for one penny more. Nobody will buy. They can buy it for the market price all over the world. I can't sell it for one penny less because the quantity demanded is set by this market quantity, market equilibrium quantity. Me reducing my price isn't going to change my quantity demanded one bit. There's only one price. It's the market price for me as an individual. It's been set over here at the market level, but for me individually, there's just one price. The good news for me, however, is that I can sell as many bushels of wheat as I want at the market price. I can sell one, I can sell a hundred, I can sell a thousand, I can sell a million, however much I want. And I will always get the market price again and again and again. So how does that look on the revenue side? Remember from when we were studying elasticity, total revenue equals price times quantity. How many did you sell and what did you get for them? So if I'm selling lemonade at a dollar a glass and I sell 10 glasses, a dollar times 10 is $10, that's my total revenue. In a perfectly competitive market, that's also equal to your average revenue. Average revenue is simply total revenue divided by quantity, which when you look at this equation, that's going to take us right back to price, isn't it? And so total revenue divided by quantity, average revenue is equal to price in this market structure. And then finally, marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. Change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. Well, if I'm selling lemonade for a dollar a glass and I sell one more, how much did my total revenue change? By one dollar. How much did my quantity change? By one. So my marginal revenue would be one dollar. Ta-da! That's also the price. So marginal revenue Average revenue and price are all the same thing in this market structure. It's all the same. So let's have a look at that and see how that works. <clears throat> First of all, let's calculate the total revenue. Total revenue, as you recall, is just price times quantity. So you're simply going to multiply this column by this column for every row. So it looks like this. 0 times 10 is 0, 1 times 10 is 10, 2 times 10 is 20, 3 times 10 is 30. Easy peasy. Now, what about your average revenue? In this case, we're going to do total revenue, this column, divided by quantity, this column. So, total revenue of 10 divided by quantity of 1 gives us an average revenue of 10. <clears throat> total revenue of 20 <clears throat> divided by 2 gives us average revenue of 10. Total revenue of 30 divided by 3 gives us average revenue of, of 10. It always comes back to $10. And I bet you can guess how this is going to go on the marginal revenue side too, right? Marginal revenue is... <clears throat> Change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. 
every time we sell another unit, our total revenue changes by 10 and our quantity changes by 1. So, duh, it just comes back to 10 every, every time. When we go from 0 to 1, our total revenue changed by 10 and our quantity changed by 1. 10 divided by 1 is 10. When we go from 1 to 2, our total revenue changed by 10, from 10 to 20. And our quantity changed by 1. 10 divided by 1 is 10. 10, 10, 10, all the way down. Take a minute and go through these numbers for yourself and make sure you understand what we're doing here before we go on. If you need to pause the video, feel free to do that. Total revenue, I mean, marginal revenue is equal to price. In this market structure, marginal revenue equals price. Always, marginal revenue equals price. So how do we maximize profit? What quantity is going to give the firm the most overall profit? Not the most profit per unit, but the most overall profit. Remember, profit is total revenue minus total cost. And so to think, to find that answer, we're going to think like an economist. Think at the margins. If we increase the quantity by one unit, revenue goes up by marginal revenue, right? Goes up by marginal revenue. Change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. Marginal revenue, you will recall, is price. At the same time, if we produce one more unit, cost goes up by marginal cost. Change in total cost divided by change in quantity. Are marginal revenue and marginal cost the same? Only at one point. Generally, no. Revenue is the money that you have coming in. Cost is the money that you have going out. These are very different terms. So, if your marginal revenue, what you're going to get paid for this one more unit, is greater than your marginal cost, what it costs you to make that one more unit, woohoo, we made a profit on that unit, and we should produce more to increase our total profit. On the other hand, if marginal revenue, what we got paid for that one more unit, is less than marginal cost, what it costs us to make that one more unit, we got to quit. That has reduced our total profit. We lost money on that last unit. So let's look at it and do some calculations, shall we? Here's our total costs in this case. So to calculate our profit, we would take total revenue minus total cost. In this case, 0 minus 5, negative 5. We're losing money. Total revenue at 1, 10 minus 9. So we made a dollar profit already. 20 minus 15, and so on, all the way down. And this is how we find our profit. It's just total revenue minus total cost. At 1, at output one, we make a dollar profit. At two, we make five dollars profit. At three, we make seven. At four, we make seven. Whoa, when we produce five units, we actually make less than we made when we were producing four. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder if that works out the same when we're looking at marginal costs and marginal revenue. Let's have a look. Marginal costs. Here they are. Marginal cost, as you will recall, is change in total cost divided by change in quantity. So here's our marginal cost calculated all the way down. And so our marginal revenue is, when we go from 0 to 1, our marginal revenue is 10, and our marginal cost is 4. So we have a marginal profit of 6. 
and then our marginal profit is four, and then our marginal profit is two, and then we have zero marginal profit, and then we go into the negatives, and it looks like this. So, if you're a businessman, are you going to produce that output five? No, it reduces your overall profit. How do you know where to find that piece? At any quantity where marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, produce more. You're going to increase your profit. That's all of these marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, greater than marginal cost, greater than marginal cost. Keep producing. At any quantity where marginal revenue is less than marginal cost, <clears throat> You're reducing, reducing the quantity raises the profit. So here at this quantity of five, marginal revenue is less than marginal cost. So you don't want to go here. You've actually reduced your profit at this level. So you would back up to this point. Oops, I wanted to make one more point. So we maximize, we make the very most profit right here, where marginal revenue equals marginal costs, where total revenue is 40 and total cost is 33 and our profit is 7. That's where it's all maximized, right there, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Let's look at it on the graph. Here's our marginal cost curve in this case. In this case, our marginal cost curve is linear, which is not usually the case. It's usually J-shaped. But this time, it just happens by coincidence that it's linear. And there's our marginal revenue curve. Marginal revenue is the same as price. And you'll recall from the beginning of this lecture that for the individual producer, there's only one price, it's the market price. It's always going to be the same. So marginal revenue is price. So at these quantities represented by Q sub A over here, marginal cost is less than marginal revenue. So this distance between them represents profit. And we should just keep producing more and more and more. And yes, the amount of profit per unit gets smaller and smaller. They get closer together, but we're still increasing our overall profit. On the other hand, when we're at this part of the curve, represented by Q sub B, we see that marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue. It costs us more to produce this unit than we're going to be able to sell it for. We're losing money on this unit. So every unit we produce over here is reducing our total profit. So if we want to get back to maximum profit, we want to increase our profit, we have to produce less. So at Q sub A, where marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, produce more. At Q sub B, where marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue, produce less. Where's the magic sweet spot? Right in the middle. At Q sub 1, where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, you can't do any better. If you produce less, you're leaving money on the table. If you produce more, you're losing money on every unit you sell. This is the spot where your profit will be maximized at that point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And that, my friends, is the profit maximization rule. The firm should produce at the level of output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. A key equation and a key rule for understanding profit maximization. So what if the price changes? If the price changes, then the profit maximizing rate of output changes too, right? When the price was P1, 
then marginal costs and marginal revenue were equal at Q sub 1. But when the price goes up to P sub 2, then the profit maximizing rate of output goes up to Q2 because you still want to produce at the rate where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Hmm. Sounding familiar? When the price goes up, the quantity supplied goes up. Is that ringing a bell with anyone? Sure. That's our law of supply. It's our law of supply. So in fact, the marginal cost curve determines the firm's quantity at any price, and the marginal cost curve is the firm's supply curve. Thanks so much for being here with me for Dr. Archer's lecture. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks so much.